Alright guys, I'll just take one minute of your precious time. Just wanted to let all of you know that if you want to practice all these questions using artificial intelligence and practice on a portal which is as similar as your actual PT exam which will give you exact scores which you are likely to get in your exam, just register on languageacademy.com.au. You can practice as many questions. On top of that, you can get instant feedback, instant scores and instant suggestions on what are the things you need to work on and how to improve your mistakes and turn them into your strength. You can also take a full scored mock test. You'll get a full scorecard. You'll get in-depth analysis. You'll get tutor's feedback. One mock test is available for free and four sectional mock tests are available for free. You just need to go on languageacademy.com.au. Register over there. Use Google Chrome, log in and practice and make sure you get your desired score at the earliest. Now you can continue with the video or you can just log on to languageacademy.com.au and practice all these questions over there as well. All the very best. I'll see you very soon. the opportunity. The Fédération Aéronautique Internationale states that a man or woman officially becomes an astronaut upon reaching an altitude of over 100 miles. As of March 30, 2006, 443 people have crossed this imaginary line. Efforts to learn more about space are widespread. Since the astronaut Yuri Gagarin made his pioneering exit out of our atmosphere, men and women from 35 countries have joined his notoriety. During the race to space in the early 1960s, the United States began Project Apollo, a campaign launched to compete with the efforts of Russian scientists and future Last year, astronomers observed two neutron stars collide. A crash transmitted in gravitational waves to detectors here on Earth. Represented in sound, you can hear a small upward sweep in frequency, in the data, if you listen closely. Several seconds later, the first waves of electromagnetic radiation arrived here on Earth the first time a collision has been detected by both light and gravitational waves. And it's in studying the electromagnetic echoes of the collision that astrophysicists have gotten a far better glimpse of what really happened after those binary neutron stars merged, 130 million light years away. Oh yeah, absolutely. So it gives us an understanding of basically all the nitty gritty of what's going on after the merger takes place. Kunal Muli, an astrophysicist at Caltech first, he says, the stars collided, creating a massive, black hole-like object, which started sucking up the cloud of neutron-rich cosmic debris left over from the crash.
How are you Nisha? I am good, what about you? I am good too, but there is a thing that is bothering for a couple of days. What is that? Poverty in Bangladesh, I have read newspaper reports and saw some reports on television and I learned that Bangladesh has an extreme problem with poverty. Yeah, I heard about that too. Do you know about the data or exactly number? According to some statistic around 5% of people are living below the line of poverty in this country. In a population of 160 million, 5% is a huge number. Crows are what's known as partial migrants, according to her. Some individuals of the population travel between breeding areas and overwintering grounds, such as parking lots, every year. Others, on the other hand, choose to remain stationary. So Townsend and her colleagues wanted to discover if a crow's desire to migrate could be turned on and off. They kidnapped 18 crows from overwintering locations in California and New York to find out. The birds were fitted with small backpack satellite tags, and they were tracked for several years. Three quarters of the birds traveled, covering an average distance of 300 kilometers. Furthermore, if they migrated once, they did it every year implying that traveling is not a habit they turn on and off. Migrating crows also returned year after year to the same breeding grounds, but were more flexible about where they overwinter, which could be a positive thing. Hi everybody, it's Joe Biden. I delivered a report to President Obama laying out how far we've come since he put me in charge of the cancer moonshot that was back in January and lay out a real vision for where we need to go in the immediate future to to do in five years what would otherwise take ten to inject a real sense of urgency into the fight against cancer and to change the culture and reimagine our system in order to be able to win. When President Nixon declared war on cancer in 1971, he had no army, he had no resources, and no clear strategy. But after 45 years of progress, funding research, training scientists and physicians, and treating millions of patients we now have the army. We now have tools, powerful tools. And with this moonshot, we now have a clear strategy for the road ahead.
Have you ever wished you could dial down the sound at a loud concert or a crowded bar? Envy the whale. A new study indicates that when toothed whales anticipate a loud sound, they can suppress their own oral sensitivity. The research will be presented at the Acoustics 2012 conference this week. Returning echolocation clicks are interpreted by whales and dolphins using their responsive hearing. According to previous study, these marine creatures may reduce their hearing before emitting extremely loud outbound echolocation clicks. Is it possible that they employ the same coping strategy to deal with external noises? To discover out, scientists trained a false killer whale to always make a loud noise after receiving a brief warning signal. The signal was then played using suction cup sensors mounted to the outside of the whale's head. The whale's hearing sensitivity was reduced in anticipation of a clamor. In a recent graduation ceremony, Victoria University of Wellington bestowed an honorary degree on a renowned astrophysicist. Professor Warwick Couch was awarded an honorary Doctor of Science degree for his outstanding contributions to our understanding of galaxies and dark energy. Professor Couch is a well-known astrophysicist who was a key figure in the discovery that the universe is expanding at a faster rate, a discovery that earned the lead scientists the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2011, which he attended in appreciation of his participation. Professor Couch's study involves observing galaxy clusters, which are the universe's biggest structures, with enormous ground-based and space-based observatories. He also serves on several national and international organizations that oversee the operation of these telescopes. Professor Couch has sought to promote new researchers and provide public commentary in addition to his own study. Keith Haring began his career as a true underground artist. His first well-known works were stylized graffiti artworks drawn in New York subway stations. Haring walked from station to station, sketching with chalk and talking to commuters about his art. These sketches helped him establish his distinctive style, and he became so prolific, producing up to 40 drawings each day. That fame and money soon followed. Herring's full-size works were quickly sought after by galleries and collectors in the art world. The painting's prices rose, 
which went against Herring's ideology. Art, or at least his art, he believed, was for everyone. Soon after, Herring created the Pop Shop, a store he thought would appeal to a wide spectrum of individuals. While Herring's work is divisive among street artists, with some accusing him of selling out, the pop shop changed the way people thought about the relationship between art and business. Accessing data and developing measures that can be compared across livestock, as well as potato, wheat, and rice output, were recognized as challenges by the researchers. They chose national statistics from the Departments of Agriculture, Interior, and Energy in the United States. The researchers calculated the production costs by looking at the land area, water requirements, and fertilizer requirements. They looked at greenhouse gas emissions as well. Raising potatoes, wheat, and rice were two to six times more efficient than growing pig, chicken, eggs, and dairy. Beef also consumes 28 times more land, 11 times more water, and six times more fertilizer than the average of the other animal categories in the existing agricultural system. Cattle farming also produce five times the amount of greenhouse gases. The researchers expect that by sharing this information, consumers will be able to make more educated decisions and policymakers would be able to establish systems that lower the environmental costs of what we eat. The science is difficult, but the facts are plain, the editorial says. The globe must take action to keep temperature rises below 2 degrees Celsius. A 3 to 4 degrees Celsius increase would parch continents and transform cropland into desert. Half of all species might become extinct, displacing incalculable millions of people and drowning entire nations. The controversy over British researchers' emails, which imply they tried to bury difficult data, has muddied the waters, but it hasn't sunk the bulk of evidence that these projections are founded on. The transition to a low-carbon civilization lays forth the potential of greater opportunity than sacrifice, the editorial stated. Some countries have already realized that embracing the shift can lead to increased growth, job opportunities, and higher quality of life. 
the flow of capital tells its own story. For the first time, more money was put into the economy. The Edo Tokyo Tatamono N is an open air architectural museum that can also be considered a park. Thirty buildings from all across Tokyo from the 19th and early 20th centuries have been renovated and brought to the site, where they will be examined by future generations. The structures are made up of residences, companies, stores, and bathhouses that would have been found on a typical middle class street in Tokyo from Idakura to Showa CRA. The west section is residential, featuring characteristic 19th-century thatched roof houses. Makiji CRA Homes, built in a more western design after Japan opened its borders in 1868, are also on display. Visitors can enjoy a cup of tea at the Musashino Sabo Cafe, which is located on the ground floor of one of these houses. Grand mansions, such as the one of Korkyo Takahashi, a politician killed in the early 20th century for his unpopular ideas, demonstrate how the upper class There are numerous connections between Australia and New Zealand. Both countries were colonized by Europeans relatively recently, have a large English-speaking population, and hence share a cultural heritage. Despite their near proximity, both countries are geographically isolated and have small populations in comparison to the rest of the world. They have a common history and maintain close ties on a number of fronts. Australia and New Zealand have a lot in common when it comes to population features. Both countries have minority indigenous populations and have experienced a constant inflow of migrants from all over the world throughout the second half of the 20th century. Both countries have seen similar drops in fertility since the high levels seen during the baby boom, while also benefiting from ever increasing life expectancy. As a result of these changes, both countries are dealing with an aging population and the challenges.
people first learned how to make fabric some 10,000 years ago. A spindle was used to spin wool, cotton, flax, or hemp into a fine thread. After then, the thread was weaved into a fabric. The first weaving machines were likely little more than a pair of sticks that held a set of parallel threads called the warp while inserting the cross thread, called the weft. Later devices, known as looms, included rods that divided the threads, making it easier to insert the weft. The shuttle, a piece of wood that held a spool of thread, was passed between the separated threads. Although numerous means of automating the processes were discovered throughout the Industrial Revolution of the 18th century, the essential principles of spinning and weaving have remained the same until today. Many threads might be spun at the same time with modern devices like the spinning mule and with the help of devices like the flying shuttle, broad pieces of cloth could be woven at great speed. There are currently between 6,000 and 7,000 languages spoken on the planet. Linguists estimate that half of these are on the verge of extinction. Because enterprises that need to connect with a diverse group of individuals from different cultures prefer to utilize more widely spoken languages like English, Chinese, or Spanish, the rate of language loss has accelerated in recent decades. This approach is acceptable but it implies that many indigenous languages may perish before anyone has the chance to learn them. Linguists believe that some of these languages may have a wealth of information regarding language learning and cognitive development. Furthermore, a local language based on a local culture has words and phrases that express that culture. If the language is lost, the culture is presumably lost as well and finally, Historians will argue that a language contains evidence of a region's history and should, for that reason alone, be preserved. A heart attack on a platter, is a phrase you've probably heard. Maybe it's Alfredo Fettuccini. Maybe it's a bacon cheeseburger, deep-fried to artery-clogging perfection and smothered in batter. In any case, it's evident that our modern diet isn't necessarily the healthiest for our hearts. However, this does not imply that heart disease is a new innovation. Because some Egyptian mummies show evidence of atherosclerosis, or artery stiffening, according to a study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. A previous investigation of a pharaoh's mummy in Cairo's Egyptian Antiquities Museum revealed that he had atherosclerosis. Scientists at the University of California, Irvine, 
were intrigued by this finding and wondered if damaged arteries were widespread among ancient Egyptians. So they gathered 20 mummies from the museum's basement and various exhibits and used whole-body CT scans to examine their inside. The site challenged can use foldable white canes to navigate their surroundings. However, the tactile aspect of the guide stick only provides so much information. The user of the cane must manually locate and avoid obstacles. However, new high-tech canes are on the way. With their experimental smart cane, Indian researchers attempted to fill in some of the gaps last year. When an impediment is within 3 meters, the device uses a connected ultrasonic transmitter and a sensor that shakes the cane to notify the user. Students at Birmingham City University in the United Kingdom are working on a cane that can recognize familiar faces as they approach. The Explore Mobility Cane is equipped with an inbuilt digital camera that scans the faces of passers-by and compares them to a database kept on a memory card in the cane's handle. If a facial recognition match is found, the cane sends a Bluetooth notification to the user's smartphone. A single letter of the genetic
On Saturday, May 19, get your binoculars and telescopes ready for the first International Sidewalk Astronomy Night. Sidewalk Astronomers was started in 1968 in San Francisco, at a time when many people were seeing stars during the day as well as at night. The group's purpose is to use good viewing equipment to introduce more people to the beauty and wonder of celestial objects, as well as to provide information about what eyewitnesses are truly seeing. The Moon, Jupiter, and Saturn are the most commonly observed objects. Jupiter's largest moons are visible with good binocs. When I pointed an inexpensive telescope at Saturn, several friends were so taken aback by the sight of the rings that they checked the other end of the scope to see if I had tampered with it. From Beijing to the corner of 81st Street, Sidewalk Astronomy Night is an international event with dozens of public viewing spots and Central Park West in Manhattan. The survey concluded that the loss of construction jobs by Latino immigrants contributed to a rise in unemployment among all Latino employees to 6.5%, compared to 4.7% for non-Latino workers. According to the research, Latino workers had achieved their historic low unemployment rate of 4.9% as recently as late 2006, owing primarily to a job boom among immigrants. To put it clearly, Hispanics had a difficult time in the labor market in 2007, said Rakesh Kochar, Associate Director for Research at the Pew Center, a nonpartisan Washington think tank. Mexican immigrants suffered the most job losses, with their unemployment rate rising to 8.4% from 5.5% in 2007, according to the research. Employees born in Mexico lost 152,000 employment, or roughly 60%, of the 247,000 jobs lost by Latino workers in the construction business in 2007. Good evening ma'am. How can I help you? Good evening. Can you please show me the food menu card? Yes ma'am. Are you veg or non-veg? Non-veg. Here is your menu ma'am. Please take a look and tell me what you would like to have. How is your grilled chicken? Is that okay? Yes ma'am. We have really good quality chicken and we are quite famous here for grilled chicken. I am sure you will love it. Should I go for it ma'am? Okay. Half grilled chicken with two buttered bread. Okay. What would you love to have in a beverage?
Buckinghamshire New University in High Wycombe has established a retail management foundation degree in collaboration with Dreams, a bed firm. The administration wants to encourage more partnership between industry and higher education. The majority of the sector's growth has come from two-year programs that combine academic and work-based learning. The Dreams degree, like the well-publicized, McDonald's A-Level, includes the existing company training package. While we respect the motivation behind the decision to allow firms like McDonald's to issue their own degrees, we believe that it is better for employers to engage with universities in initiatives like this, said Ruth Farwell, vice-chancellor of Buckinghamshire New University. We are proud of our work-based foundation degrees, Dr. Farwell continued, which are established in collaboration with companies and allow students to obtain qualifications while working and on the basis of their work experience. On World Food Day in 2001, President Johannes of Germany advocated the formation of a worldwide coalition to combat hunger. He recommended building a worldwide alliance to address political and other issues that prevent enough money from being raised to combat hunger and poverty. The plan was well received by a huge number of people. Attendees at the World Grain Summit Conference five years later opted to change the manifesto to International Eradicate Hunger Coalition. Many people hope that the coalition will be supported, so that a resolution and strategies to end hunger and poverty may be established. The Grain and Agricultural Organization, the International Agricultural Development Fund, and the World Grain Plan Department issued a unified call for poverty eradication in 2002 during the Development Fundraising Conference in Monterrey, Mexico. The spring wedding season has arrived, bringing with it heavy fees for guests particularly those in the wedding party. However, it can be difficult for 20-somethings to squeeze extra costs into tight budgets, especially if they are attending numerous weddings. So, before agreeing to be a part of the ceremony or a guest at a destination wedding, make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into and seek for methods to cut expenditures. If you're invited to be a part of a ceremony, don't be afraid to ask the bride and groom for details ahead of time, such as the location of the event and any other events they expect you to attend. In exchange, be open and honest about your financial condition. Colleen Bayes, 24, traveled from Washington to Boston, Pittsburgh, and Philadelphia seven times last year for dress fittings, bachelorette parties, and wedding ceremonies.
Given the following factors, China will become the world's safest and largest investment economy in the future. Massive market potential, abundant labor resources, labor cost advantage, solid corporate governance, and a stable government and society. All of these factors will encourage more foreign capital to flow into China. In short, China's economy will continue to grow at a rapid pace in the future. China's economy will continue to grow at a rate of 7% to 8% each year for the next 15 years. GDP will reach US $4.8 trillion in 2020, with GDP per capita reaching US $3,300, assuming the price index remains unchanged from present. However, China's GDP per capita is still quite low, and the country's GDP per capita is still growing slowly. To improve China's level of living, GDP per capita must be increased further, so as to bridge the present income gap between the rich and the poor. According to new guidelines announced yesterday, most individuals with type 2 diabetes should begin taking satins, or cholesterol-lowering medicines, as a preventative precaution against heart disease, whether or not they have high cholesterol levels. The American College of Physicians recommends that adults with diabetes over the age of 55 take modest dosages of satins, as well as younger patients with any additional risk factor for heart disease such as high blood pressure or a history of smoking. The new guidelines were published in the Annals of Internal Medicine on April 20, in an article that stated that approximately 16 million Americans have type 2 diabetes, with 800,000 new cases diagnosed each year. Dr. Sandeep Vijan of the University of Michigan the principal author of an article supporting the guidelines, stated that, nearly everyone with type 2 diabetes should be on a statin. According to a World Health Organization assessment released last week, polio eradication in Afghanistan and Pakistan did not proceed well in 2007. They are two of the last four countries to still be infected with the disease. In Afghanistan, the majority of incidents occurred in Taliban-controlled areas in the south. Many were in Pakistan's remote tribal border areas where Osama bin Laden is still wanted and local terrorists are fighting the government. Polio scientists interpret the territory differently, as a single epidemiological block, with two transmission routes, one in the hilly north, where type 1 polio cases are widespread, and the other in the flatter south, where type 3 polio cases are more numerous. 
tribes cross the boundary from east to west, following harvests, trading routes, and jobs. Polio has spread as far as Karachi in the southeast, where there is no fighting, but immunization drives remain inadequate, according to the report. India has yet to experience the internet revolution, as it has with cell phones and cable television. While you'll see everyone from auto drivers to senior citizens using cell phones, you'll rarely see an auto driver checking his email at a cyber cafe. This is due to the opportunity cost of spending time at cyber cafes, as well as the unavailability of services to reach a huge portion of India. The American Standard Code for Information Interchange is also widely used on the Internet. Many communities are thus cut off from the benefits of computers and the Internet. The fact is that the majority of India's billion people lack Internet access and not only because they lack a connection or a computer. They are being left behind by the digital revolution because they do not speak English, the main language on the Internet. Even if there is room for further growth among English language users in India, far greater growth could be unleashed. The Internet has become an agent of revolutionary change in its brief existence, and it is one of the most effective weapons for promoting and defending freedom, as well as facilitating democratic access to information and knowledge. It has evolved into one of today's most powerful instruments of advancement, and it has progressively become an integral component of the global social, economic, cultural, and political infrastructure. The Internet has a huge impact on our lives. Email, the online, and blogs have become part of the everyday routine for more than a billion Internet users during the last decade. The classic PC-based Internet browsers, Internet Explorer, Firefox, have given way to desktop applications, mobile phones, and satellite navigational systems in vehicles and living rooms as Internet access touchpoints.
A thunderstorm requires three essential ingredients to form. Moisture, rising unstable air, and a lifting mechanism. The sun warms the Earth's surface, which warms the air above it. If forced to rise, this warm surface air will continue to climb as long as it weighs less and is warmer than the air surrounding it. Heat is transferred from the Earth's surface to the upper levels of the atmosphere as air rises. It condenses into a cloud as the water vapor it contains cools, releasing the heat. The cloud finally grows tall enough to reach locations where it is below freezing. Some of the water vapor condenses into ice, while others condenses into water droplets. Both have a charge of electricity. Positive charges are found in ice particles, while negative charges are found in raindrops. When the charges build up enough, they are discharged in a bolt of lightning, which causes the sound waves we hear as thunder. There is perhaps no more marijuana-friendly place in the country than Mendocino County, where plants can grow to be more than 15 feet tall. Medical marijuana clubs have adopted stretches of roadway, and the sticky, sweet perfume of marijuana fills the streets during the autumn harvest. Residents of Mendocino County, like those in other regions of California, have recently begun to question if the state's embrace of marijuana for medicinal purposes has gone too far. California voters authorized medical marijuana under state law in 1996, and 11 other states have since followed suit, despite the fact that federal law still prohibits the sale of any marijuana. However, some disgruntled neighbors and law enforcement authorities claim that the California law has unwittingly provided legal protection for large-scale marijuana farmers, as well as the difficulties that such operations can bring. On Sunday, a
had grown tired of life, hated the world, and had gone to Akihabara to kill people. Cities and towns are expanding in size and population. They're also gaining more clout. The urban shift offers substantial chances to improve quality of life, but whether or not these prospects are fulfilled is highly dependent on how cities are governed in the national and local policies that influence their growth. Through the flow of labor, goods, services, information, and technology, the development of metropolitan areas is inextricably tied to the development of rural economies. However, ignoring urban concerns has huge social and environmental consequences. Over half of the poor already reside in cities in the two most urbanized regions served by the World Bank, Latin America and Europe, Central Asia. By 2025, Two-thirds of the impoverished in these regions would live in cities or towns, compared to one-third in East and South Asia. The nature of urban poverty is more than an income or employment issue. In some ways, the reasons for Asian migration to the United States were comparable to those for European migration over the Atlantic, to escape poverty and civil war, as well as to find work and freedom. In the mid-19th century, Chinese laborers were hired to help build the transcontinental railroad and offer domestic services in towns like San Francisco. In the early 20th century, they were followed by Japanese and Filipinos who worked on Hawaiian plantations, California farms, and Alaskan canneries. Only the Japanese were allowed to immigrate in families, at the request of the Japanese government. Asians in America were essentially bachelor communities of transitory sojourners in these early generations, with male-to-female ratios as high as 10 to 1. In those days, Asian American children were uncommon. The demography of this population has changed dramatically since 1970.
Coca-Cola has chosen a completely unknown British artist to front one of its largest UK ads, defying the trend for celebrity-fronted advertising. Coca-Cola has engaged Basement Jack's vocalist Charlene Hector to star in its first-ever UK branding campaign for Coca-Cola Classic, while arch-rival Pepsi uses celebrities like David Beckham and Beyoncé Knowles in its advertisements. Hector sings the Nina Simone classic I Wish as she goes through the streets delivering Coca-Cola bottles in the commercial, which premieres tomorrow. It's the latest in the company's new, real, campaign, which replaced the, always Coca-Cola, ads and aims to give the brand a more irreverent image in U.S. commercials. Actress Penelope Cruz has been shown belching after drinking Coke. The new advertising is the first campaign to be created by the quirky British advertising agency Mother, which won the Coca-Cola business last year after pitching against the company's pitching U.S. agency, McCann Erickson. Crime causes more deaths, injuries, and property destruction in the United States than all natural disasters combined. The Disaster Center is glad to be able to provide you with access to the Federal Bureau of Investigation's crime data. When you are the victim of a crime, you may react in ways that you may not understand. You may react in ways that contradict the assumptions you've made about yourself in a crisis situation. You may feel helpless, fearful, and angry at the time of the crime. You may find it difficult to relate the experience to the context of your life's assumptions afterward. A conflict typically arises between your pre-crime perception of the world and your post-crime perception of the world. On top of this the victims and their relatives often experience financial problems and time is often lost from work to handle the legal, insurance and personal problems associated with being a victim. Connecticut's criminal justice system has been exposed as having severe flaws as a result of two heinous crimes. However, Governor M. Jody Rell and Republicans in the legislature have suggested a three strikes and you're out rule that would do more harm than good. Two recently released guys broke into a Cheshire home in July and tortured and murdered three people. A guy who had been free on probation for less than a month after serving more than eight years for attacking a five-year-old broke into a new Britain house last month. He approached two women, one of whom he wounded and the other of whom he killed. Republicans, led by Ms. Rell, have proposed a three strikes rule as a response. Democrats have fought back, and deservedly so. The proposed bill, 
which would sentence anybody guilty of three violent felonies to life in prison, is a one-size-fits-all policy that would promote inequity by removing judges' discretion in sentencing. Most observers extrapolate present trends and think that what we see now ever larger cities, etc. will continue in the same direction. That is not how I see things. The global energy crisis that is already engulfing us will combine with climate change to generate a drastically different outcome. I believe the 200-year pattern of people moving from farms and small towns to big cities will finally reverse. When oil and gas-based agriculture is no longer viable, food production will become a major issue, and we will need to rebuild a more meaningful relationship between metropolitan areas and a more productive agricultural hinterland. Our megacities will shrink dramatically. The fortunate ones will densify around their historic centers and waterfronts, while many harbor cities may be affected by rising sea levels. According to the news, the world is currently more urban than rural. Surely, this reality has far-reaching implications that necessitate new attitudes and actions. However, as is often the case with significant change, the reality of what is happening and how we should evaluate these changes is hazy. From one perspective, the massive migration of people from the rural to the city is simply the latest episode in a global saga that has spanned millennia. As more efficient agriculture has reduced the number of people needed in the fields, the growth of new urban economies has drawn them to cities, first in the most affluent nations of the West, and now in the developing world. Every time this push-pull phenomenon has shifted into high gear, whether in London in the 19th century or in Mumbai today, there have been wrenching dislocations followed by attempts on the part of public authorities to stop or slow the process.
free cell phone airtime for high-performing students as an incentive to keep doing well is now in place, thanks to a Harvard economist's concept. Joel I. Klein, the chancellor of the New York City Schools, launched the Million Motivation Campaign today, an experimental program involving 2,500 students in seven middle schools. The children will each receive a free cell phone, dubbed, Million, with opportunity to earn minutes and other benefits if they meet their principal's academic goals. Teachers and administrators will also be able to contact with students via cell phones. According to the Education Department, one aspect of the plan is to rebrand achievement through a message campaign and mentoring program. Students will receive text messages, promoting the idea that a middle-class lifestyle is desirable and accessible with a good education, and highlighting the accomplishments of professionals in various fields. Since the Industrial Revolution, the proportion of greenhouse gases has risen dramatically. Humans started burning fossil fuels, notably coal, in large quantities to power steam engines and generate electricity. Following the Industrial Revolution, not only did coal use increase, but so did the widespread use of another fossil fuel, petroleum, for transportation. Annual worldwide oil output was over 150 million barrels at the turn of the 20th century. Currently, that amount is extracted globally in just two days. Fossil fuels are non-renewable energy sources that have formed over hundreds of millions of years from dead plants and animals. Burning fossil fuels unleashes billions of tons of carbon dioxide that has been trapped away for millions of years in the Earth's atmosphere. Every year, humans add billions of tons of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Randy views the YMCA, particularly the pool, to be her lifeblood. Randy is over 300 pounds and has borderline diabetes, yet she keeps her blood sugar under control and maintains a positive attitude by swimming for 45 minutes every day. Randy conquered her weight anxiety for the sake of her health, and those who swim with her and share the open locker room are proud of her. If only the millions of others who suffer from chronic health issues realize the incalculable benefits of regular physical activity to their physical and emotional well-being. In the Harvard Magazine, Frank Hu, an epidemiologist at the Harvard School of Public Health, said, The single item that comes near to a magic bullet, in terms of its robust and universal advantages, is exercise. I've written a lot about how exercise can protect you.
doctors used to be frightened about allowing heart patients to exercise. My father was kept sedentary for six weeks after a heart attack in 1968. Heart attack victims are now just in bed for about half a day before getting up and active, according to Dr. Moffat. A progressive exercise regimen is at the heart of cardiac rehab, and it aims to improve the heart's ability to pump oxygen and nutrient-rich blood more effectively throughout the body. As a result, you'll have more endurance, a stronger ability to appreciate life, and a lower mortality rate. Patients with congestive heart failure are in the same boat. Heart failure patients as old as 91 can considerably increase their oxygen usage, stated Dr. Moffat. Aerobic exercise lowers blood pressure in persons with hypertension and improves peripheral circulation in people with intermittent claudication, which causes cramping leg symptoms when they walk. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. You look worried. Is there any problem? You can share it with me. Actually I am worried about my exams. There is only one week left for it. And I think I have not studied anything. I'm feeling nervous. Oh, just focus on your studies and you won't face any problem. That's the problem. I can't concentrate. These all happened to me too and hence I started meditating. It had a radical effect on my concentration power. Thank you so much for your advice. I will surely follow it. Okay then bye. I'll meet you soon. Bye bye. It's a striking shift from just a few months ago, when the broader economy appeared to be doing well but Wall Street was reeling from billions of dollars in mortgage-related losses. Bankers and investors appear to be looking past the crisis to more profitable times, while consumers are finding themselves in a more insecure position as the employment market deteriorates and banks make it more difficult to borrow money. It's not uncommon for Wall Street to outperform the rest of the economy. After all, investors make money by predicting the future. In contrast to other aspects of the economy, the employment market improves more slowly. However, experts believe that the two factions will finally come together. Either the markets will relinquish their recent gains, or the broader economy will show greater vigor as tax rebate checks and lower interest rates stimulate the economy, if the optimists are correct.
Despite a steady stream of poor economic news, the stock market has risen nearly 11% in recent weeks. Junk bonds, or dangerous corporate debt obligations, are on the rise. Financial stocks, bank loans, and complex credit derivatives are all increasing in value. Many on Wall Street, which is at the heart of the financial crisis, appear to believe that the worst is behind them. Analysts and CEOs seem upbeat for the first time in months. Many of them expect a wide, long-term rebound in the economy and financial markets in the second half of this year, a forecast that other market experts describe as optimistic at best. For the time being, policymakers are mimicking Wall Street's tone. We are closer to the end of this problem than we are to the beginning, Treasury Secretary Henry M. Paulson Jr. said in an interview with Bloomberg Television on Thursday. Every year on the third Monday in January, schools, federal offices, post offices, and banks across the United States close to commemorate America's newest national holiday. President Ronald Reagan signed a measure into law 15 years after Dr. King's death designating the third Monday in January as a national holiday honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birth and life. It was, however, a difficult task to get the bill passed. A member of the House of Representatives had to introduce a measure first. The bill was assigned to a committee by the Speaker of the House, where it was thoroughly examined. Meetings were conducted where supporters and opponents may debate their respective points of view. After then, the committee agreed that the bill should be put to a vote. A debate on the subject has been planned by the Rules Committee. Valentine's Day is thought to have originated from the ancient Roman feast of Lupercalia. In the early days of Rome, ferocious wolves prowled the neighboring woodlands. To keep the wolves at bay, the Romans invoked Lupercus, one of their gods. On February 15, a festival in honor of Lupercus was held. The festival was held in the spring season. At the time, their calendar was different, with February falling in the early spring season. Name drawing was one of the young people's rituals. The names of Roman females were inscribed on scraps of paper and placed in jars on the eve of the Lupercalia feast. Each young man was given a slip of paper. His sweetheart for the year would be the girl whose name was picked. According to legend, the holiday was named after a priest named Valentine. Valentine was a priest in Rome at the time Christianity was a new religion.
After years of warnings about impending shortages, the country is now seeing a decline in the number of young people pursuing careers in engineering and technology. The decrease has become so severe that industry has initiated advertising efforts designed to make engineering appear glamorous and cool, and corporations are gradually beginning to recruit foreign personnel or sending jobs to where the engineers are located, such as Vietnam and India. Engineering prowess was the key to this country's transformation from post-war humiliation to economic dominance. However, educators, executives, and young Japanese themselves claim that the young in Japan are acting more like Americans, opting for higher-paying fields such as finance and medicine, or more purely creative fields such as the arts, rather than following their salaryman fathers into the unglamorous world of manufacturing. Stress is a body reaction to any demands or changes in its internal and external environment. Whenever there is a change in the external environment such as temperature, pollutants, humidity and working conditions, it leads to stress. In these days of competition when a person makes up his mind to surpass what has been achieved by others, leading to an imbalance between demands and resources, it causes psychosocial stress. It is a part and parcel of everyday life. Stress has a different meaning, depending on the stage of life you are in. The loss of a toy or a reprimand from the parents might create a stress shock in a child. An adolescent who fails in the examination may feel as if everything has been lost and life has no further meaning. In an adult the loss of his or her companion, job or professional failure may appear as if there is nothing more to be achieved. Now crack your PTE sitting at your home. Language Academy brings to you the smartest AI-powered practice portal, with instant scores and feedback for all the tasks. Along with the practice questions, access free sectional and full mock tests, and get instant scorecard with in-depth feedback and analysis. For more hidden secrets, tips, strategies, and proven templates, click the link below and subscribe to our video course today.